Hi everyone, let's look at these uh, Papaya Studio acrylics today. I want to quickly re review them and show you how the colors work and where do these paints stand compared to other acrylic paint. So first of all, I have this set that comes with 10 colors and a free brush. I already opened it and I already tested it and you can also read the review on my blog if you don't like watching videos. But um, yeah, this one will be a visual review. So first I want to stop uh, by that brush and um, get it out of our way. It's a size 6 uh, flat brush. but um, don't have high expectations because actually you are probably not gonna use this brush. The handle is sanded poorly and you cannot really enjoy holding it. Then you can see that this ferrule is not really tight on the handle which is also a sign of poor workmanship and like the most important thing it's uh, obviously the the hair, the bristles. Uh, this is a synthetic brush, which is okay for acrylics. We need a synthetic brush, but as you can see, this is a new brush. I used it once, but I guarantee you it had the same non-existent uh, shape that it can hold when I just open it. You can see all the bristles are of different length. They cannot hold shape and they're also very stiff. I think you can hear how stiff they are. So this brush is a great bonus. I appreciate the effort and the intention of the brand, but unfortunately I will not be able to use it. And for a beginner, it's a bad brush to start. Uh, when I say that this brush doesn't hold the shape and it's not a really good brush, I will just uh, show you another one. This is also a cheap brush I found in like nearest art store, but and this is also synthetic. Look how different are the bristles and how different is the shape. Yes, this is not uh, flat, this is angled, but it doesn't matter because we can see that the shape is different, the ferrule is different, this is very tight, this is a nice um, handle with the easy grip, and that's a brush I will definitely use. So yeah, if you are getting the set just because it comes with a brush, I immediately tell you no, get like separate colors or a set that without brush, but it does not affect the price anyhow too much, uh, so you, you will just not use this brush all. Uh, you can use it for scumbling technique. Uh, it's a technique when we use a dry brush to add some details on top of already painted area or if you want to add some effects of splatters or something so you can still try to um, take advantage of this brush as much as we can but well for regular painting it's a no. Now the colors. Uh, the, the colors um, 10 colors right here and it's all primaries uh, coming in warm and cool temperature and uh, some additional colors like um, yellow ochre deep green uh, uh, black and of course white now the tubes are really cool here with the um, pibeo i actually don't know if i'm even saying that right uh i actually learned french and to me it will be pibeo but uh, and I, I am sure for french people as well but uh, in english i'm not even sure how to correctly say the name Pibeo. I will I will stick with it. If it's a wrong one, please forgive me. It does not uh, affect the paint quality or the quality of my review um, anyhow. So the, the tube's actually very nice compared to other student-grade uh, paint that we can see. Uh, for example, we have another very, very popular brand for student-grade for beginner paint. It's Amsterdam. And they have the, this plastic um, tubes, plastic leads. Right, simple. Which is nothing wrong with that, but there is one thing. This uh, tube is easier to get the maximum out of it. It's filled now uh, super tight, right? We can see that the paint is coming out, but when we will keep using it, it's easier to um, wrap this and get the paint out of the tube, like you see with the oils or professional paints. This is easier with metal tubes than with plastic ones. So this is great, this is great quality, and this is also something that is more expensive for the brand to produce, to use the uh, good leads and uh, good metal tubes. So despite the fact that this is more expensive for them to make, the price of the set is still very, very affordable comparable to our other student um, grade paints. So what we have here? We have two yellows, we have two blues, two reds, um, and um, as I said, they are all uh, primaries in uh, two temperatures, and the labels are actually also very professional. First, we see, the, of course, the name of uh, the paint, for example, Primary Magenta. We see the opacity transparency label. So this color is transparent versus, for example, uh, white that is opaque, and then we will see a filled uh, square. I feel black square. And on the back of it, we will see, of course, the non-toxic uh, label, uh, the recycle of the recycling option of the tube, and also what pigments were used. So this uh, color, primary magenta, was used with pigment uh, violet and pigment red. Versus uh, white is a single pigmented color, just white pigment, which is very good. This is something that professional paints have. Single, single pigmented colors are more expensive. Um, these pigments are of a high quality. So again. This set, coming as a student grade, like beginner friendly uh, paint set, has already set a very high standard of quality. Mm. And also, it has a light fastness um, label. Uh, this is a grade two. 
this is a grade one all of the pbo colors are very light fast this is grade one or just light fast uh, which is grade two uh, and that means according to the classification that these paints are archival and they can last indoors with proper care with proper varnishing up to 100 years but the pigments uh, and the colors that have uh, just regular light fast they are not good for outdoor use and they will probably fade over years and of course the classification talks about 100 years uh, but that is something i think more relevant for professional paints rather than for student grade paints i don't think they will last 100 years but i cannot test it so uh, we will just assume the best next thing i want to talk about is the consistency because we know that the acrylics they come in a soft body in heavy body in fluid form so this um paints they have a thick consistency but not as thick as a heavy body paint for example a professional heavy body paint like Winston and Newton for example it is thicker much thicker and much heavier than uh, this acrylics but still they are not um, completely soft body which makes them very nice to use because you can either use them um, for impasto or just thicker application or you can use them diluted and things with water or uh, the brand recommends they use uh, using a special binder because we know that water breaks down um, acrylic paint composition it breaks down this bond between the pigments and the um, binder itself so uh, the brand actually recommends using a good acrylic medium to thin them I'm normally using the gag from golden it's like my universal um, thinner for all acrylic paints but you can of course choose something else with a little amount of water it will also work it will give some washes so i already did some uh swatches of course the camera and the natural light they a little bit alter how the color looks and it makes it a little brighter so you will need to make your own swatches because you will see that it's different from what it is on the uh, label and we always need to have a swatch for future paintings so what we have here we have all the colors and um also something very uh, specific to paper paints is that they dry rather to a matte satin finish not uh, to a semi-gloss finish like most acrylics dry so this is more like a gouache like um, finish we get as you can see they all dry to like velvety a little bit chalky uh, to touch uh, finish which is not gloss in any way and yes some colors are more transparent some colors are more opaque of course and uh, as i said you can thin it with water to make a watercolor effect and just to uh, use more transparent colors in your paintings <clears throat> and as you can see it's very easy to uh, water down um, Pibeo acrylics and also I tested already the opacity we will still go over it one more time uh, to see how the paint actually works but as you can see some colors with just single coat are pretty opaque but most of them with single coat are still uh, semi-opaque semi-transparent or quite transparent this yellow even though uh, the primary yellow they say it's pretty opaque um, for details I would not say that right over black maybe with a few coats it will work in, in a more opaque uh, way but with a single coat it does not work like this versus uh, primary magenta they say it's a transparent color as we can clearly see that, that this is this is not covering the underlying uh, black color which means yes this is transparent and white of course is uh, very opaque as well as um, primary blue so okay let's get to business let's test some uh, paints on uh, paper I have uh, water uh, color paper Hansen paper uh, it might also go to choice so let's just squeeze some paint and test so of course I squeeze just a little bit of primary colors to see how they work white and also my gag to mix with paint to show you how that works in terms of uh, thinning it and why I like it more than um, just water I also have water here so I will of course show you how that works with water as well now first let's try just dry brush um, I'll just take some um, cadmium red and we can see that the dry brushing is nice and we also will see how fast it dries uh, I can tell you because I already tested it that it dries faster than a few minutes and we even can see that even the application is somehow not glossy so even when it's wet the paint on paper it does not look glossy at all with a little water we can thin the paint make it better for the brush stroke and also just play with the value of the color So it can really imitate uh, watercolors if you if you'd like, right? Because as you can see, thinning with water is very easy, and the pigment stays very nice and vibrant. It does not break down. But what if we could use it with uh, some gag? I'll use the same red color and some gag. 
Of course, using with GEC, you need to mix it with paint on your color palette. And this is the color with uh, GEC mixed. So as you can see, I did not use any water, but the coverage is better than with, with just dry brush. And it also does not um, dilute the color as much as if I will go with water constantly. I can just add white if I want to change the color, but in general, the gag is to extend the working time and to increase the flow of the paint without changing the color necessary and without breaking the paint with uh, water, of course. And uh, as I said, yes, the light and the camera does not tra transmit the um, actual hue of this cadmium red. It's less orangey, it's more red, but very like soft red. And as I told you that it dries super quick, this dry brush is already completely dry and it's been a few seconds. Of course, the, the ones that we used water are still a little bit wet, but the edges already start to dry as well. So that is why I also prefer using um, GAC because it gives a little bit more drying time or you need to use the slow drying uh, mediums because if you want to blend it now, of course it will be very hard because um, acrylics are not mixable, right? Why, why, once they are dry to prove that point or to not prove that point because I'm testing right with you. Let's add a little white to the paint that I used with GAC and it's, as you can see, already also start to dry but still can be blended if we need to blend, right? But this one is already completely dry. I can just cover it up, but I cannot blend it anymore. If we start talking about mixing, let's see how the colors mix. And I will just use the regular mix blue and yellow. I'm using primary yellow and I'm using primary blue here for my first test. All right. And as we have two temperatures for each color, I will also test the yellow and the ultramarine. I'm normally mixing with a palette knife on the palette. Now I'm just showing you how it's easy to use. That's why I'm mixing on the paper. So you can see easy to mix on palette or on paper or on canvas. And because we have two temperatures, you can mix much more colors than with just a um, single set of uh, primaries. As you can see, we can uh, achieve different tones, different colors that we may need for our paintings. Now let's see how easy it is to blend. And again, I'm not um, taking a lot of uh, colors. want to see how blendable is it on the surface. I'd say it's pretty blendable if you keep your brush slightly wet. Sorry, I didn't see that camera is not facing that direction. But yes, it's pretty blendable. So I will also give it a go. Maybe, um, as I said, just wet the brush a little bit. And because it's fast drying, it you can see that the line can still be here. So I would just go again with the color to make sure that line disappeared. Right. So I would say if you already progressing from beginner to professional artist and you need time to work on your detailing or on your blocking technique when you layer some blocks of uh, colors and then you uh, go um, over the colors with the detailed brush. I would say that probably the um, Cubero acrylics are too fast drying for that. As I said, you either need to use a slow drying medium or you need to use a different um, acrylics. And also if you're a complete beginner and you are learning complex techniques from the very start, it will be also challenging for you to learn how to blend this because this paint, because it is fast drying. Use uh, an acrylic medium or use simpler techniques with this um, paint. For example, layering. Layering is a very easy technique or blend with a sponge when you can apply directly the colors and quickly blend them with a sponge rather than uh, with a brush when you're going over and over while it's uh, technically drying. So let's see how the detailing and the layering will go with this um, paint. For example, the green already dried a little bit. I'm just drying, I'm not making anything specific because we just need to know if the paint will work or no for us. I 
I'd say that their um, primary red is still sort of semi-transparent despite the fact that they say that it's opaque on the tube. I think depending on what color is underneath, is underneath is a darker color, like this dark gray or black as we saw on the uh, my swatch, then it may be still transparent. Also, the thinner application, how we actually supposed to use acrylic paint, gives more transparency with uh, this pair of acrylics than a thick application, as you can see here. So, uh, saying that, I think then um, this paint should be good for glazing. Let's try on this um, patch of uh, green. I'll use some uh, cadmium yellow. And I will mix it with um, GAC to make it ready for a little glaze. Yeah, I think the, uh, the paint is good for glazing. Yeah, that would be nice. So I am a little bit um, conflicted uh, as of now about the paint. I think it has great potential. It's great for beginners. It has a very distinctive um, differences from regular acrylic paints. For example, it dries, as we see, to a very um, flat finish. It's, it's not reflecting any light um, almost. Uh, it has it, it is very mixable. It is blendable. But the colors still appear to be more transparent than the label tells us. So considering all of this, I still believe this is a good paint for beginners and I actually know that even pro uh, painters use it uh, for pouring, for uh, painting on glass or on porcelain because Piber, they have special paints for all these surfaces. And of course, you can see that it's beautiful for washes and for uh, more diluted use of um, the color as well as the flat use of the color for the better coverage. So I think unless you really want to work with something detailed that needs uh, perfectly opaque colors one on top of uh, another there is no other reasons why this paint is not good for you as a beginner if you're already a pro artist then i think you will be a little bit frustrated uh, buying a paint and seeing that this is opaque and then getting it on the uh, paper or canvas and and like ending up with not really um, an opaque finish well with this being said i think I would definitely recommend this paint for uh, beginners and uh, again i had a set of 10 colors which i think is more than enough and it's perfect because again it has all the primary colors and the needed colors uh, additional colors that you may need green not to mix it every time uh, yellow ochre to work with the uh, skin tones and of course black and white uh, before i finish i just want to try and um, blend the colors one more time with a different um, palette with the uh, reds and a little wet brush, slightly wet. I think the secret to blending with uh, Piber, I'm used to blend actually with dry brush and it works really good for me. But with the uh, Piber, I can see that you need a wetted brush to blend nicely the colors. And as you can see, then you have a very nice blended background for the sunset or for the sky. So yes, I think the secret is to use uh, just just to dip a little bit the, the brush in water and with a flat brush directly on canvas or paper, you can blend um, your backgrounds. So with all this being said, 
we uh, what we talked about is the color range that the, the set has, how to use it with water, and if it's possible to use it as watercolor techniques, uh, the opacity of the colors, and also um, the possibility of using it with detailing or glazing or blocking, blending, and how mixable the color is. I hope it answers your question if the uh, paint is good for you. And also, just to finish, let me show you it's all a little bit closer loop. So you can see the colors as they are. And I will also take it to the lighter spot so you can see. Yeah, you can see that on the video it, it, it looked more orange, the um, primary red, but it is not. And how it acts with water. So yes, I think the colors are very beautiful and it's very unique that it, it has this matte to satin finish, not glossy. So yeah, I really enjoyed using this um, acrylic paints and I hope you will do as well. Let me know what you think about the Pibero brand in general.